Can you believe it? After more than 50 years of running on 100% diesel, the MBTA is about to get its first completely smokeless electric train. In Boston, a new era of public transportation is approaching as the first battery-powered trains are set to roll out on the Fairmount line. This isn't just a breakthrough in technology, but a bold step toward reducing emissions and modernizing an aging, noisy, and dirty transit system. But what does this really mean for Boston's commuters? How will these electric trains change daily travel and the environment? And can the Fairmount line's pioneering project spark a wider transformation across the entire MBTA network. Tune into today's episode of On the Trains to find out. First, let's look at the latest announcement recently updated by MBTA. Latest announcement. On November 24, 2025, the MBTA, along with its operating partner, Keolis Commuter Services, officially announced the completion of the project to replace more than 28 miles of track on the Fairmount line, marking one of the largest projects in the history of the region's commuter rail system. The replacement spanned nearly 28 miles and was completed in less than half a year, with construction progress at an incredible pace. On average, crews were able to complete about a quarter mile of track per day and even half a mile on some days. The project, which cost $12 million, began in June 2025. The construction process required the Fairmount line to adjust its operating schedule, causing some inconvenience to passengers and the local community. However, thanks to the cooperation and patience of all involved, the project remains on schedule and is expected to return the Fairmount line to normal normal service at a 30-minute frequency for most of the day starting December 1, 2025. Philip Eng, Acting Secretary and General Manager of the MBTA, said of the project, the battery-powered trains and supporting infrastructure will provide smoother, cleaner, and more reliable rides for our riders. We thank our riders for their patience during this important track renovation. At the same time, John Killeen, General Manager of Keoli's Commuter Services, also expressed his thanks to the entire construction team and the community for their support and cooperation throughout the project. In addition to the track replacement, construction crews are also undertaking a number of other improvements to the service along the line, including cleaning and refurbishing stations, removing graffiti, clearing roadsides, trimming bushes, and upgrading drainage systems. These works not only make the railway safer and more modern, but also contribute to improving the experience for passengers and residents living near the line. So how does the MBTA plan to convert the Fairmount line to its first all-electric service? Let's find out the next part and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to update the important information every day. Fairmount Line and Battery Electric Train Project the Fairmount Line is a 9.2-mile, nine-station line that connects Boston South Station to Redville. While it was previously considered a low-traffic line with low-frequency trains running every 45 to 90 minutes, ridership on the line has grown rapidly by 30% between 2019 and 2025, surpassing pre-pandemic levels, making it the fastest-growing line in North American light rail. This growth has led the MBTA to select Fairmount as the first test line for the battery electric train train project. The MBTA and Keolis are planning to introduce battery electric multiple units BEMU trains, battery-powered trains that charge as they travel over elevated tracks at two major stations, Boston South Station and Redville. This hybrid technology gives the MBTA flexibility to operate on tracks that are not yet fully electrified. The first train is expected to be in commercial operation by mid-2028. The train designs from the companies are quite different. Siemens is developing a new design, including a multi-mode charger locomotive with an electric traction car and battery storage. Meanwhile, Stadler is maintaining the traditional design with the KISS electric locomotive similar to Caltrain but improved to operate entirely on batteries more efficiently. It is expected that when the project is completed, the train frequency on the Fairmount line will increase to 20 minutes per trip during the week and 30 minutes on weekends, a significant improvement compared to the present. Not only focusing on operational efficiency, BEMU train manufacturers also carefully invested in interior design to enhance the passenger experience. The spacious interior with scientifically arranged seats Using high-quality, easy-to-clean materials and ergonomic design helps reduce fatigue when sitting for long periods. The energy-saving LED lighting system provides soft light, suitable for reading or working. 
The train also has an area for passengers with bulky luggage, baby strollers, and wheelchair users, ensuring easy access for all subjects. Spacious automatic doors help the boarding and disembarking process quickly, reducing train stop time. Modern passenger information systems with station arrival, time displays, audio announcements, and electronic boards updating details about the route, next stop, and train status are fully equipped. High-speed Wi-Fi and power outlets allow passengers to work or entertain during the trip. Sound insulation and vibration reduction are optimized to provide a smooth, quiet ride, minimizing noise and vibration from outside and the train's mechanical systems. However, the project is still controversial and complicated. Benefits and Challenges The switch from diesel trains to battery electric multiple units on the Fairmount line has many tangible benefits for Boston's public transportation system and surrounding communities. The MBTA estimates that the project will save more than 1.5 million gallons of diesel fuel per year while reducing CO2 emissions by approximately 18,000 tons. This not only contributes to reducing environmental pollution, but also supports the City of Boston's sustainability goals and response to climate change. In addition to the environmental benefits, passengers will also experience smoother, faster, and quieter rides. Battery-powered trains reduce noise and vibration, making residential areas along the rail line less affected by noise pollution. This would improve the quality of life for residents living near the rail lines, who often complain about noise and emissions from diesel trains. However, the project also faces many challenges and mixed opinions. The choice of the Fairmount line as the starting point for the project has been controversial. The line is the shortest and has the lowest ridership in the system, while the Providence line, which is three times longer and has nearly 20,000 passengers a day, still operates entirely on diesel trains despite being electrified in 2000. Many experts and residents believe that the MBTA should prioritize electrifying the Providence line first to take advantage of existing infrastructure and bring greater environmental efficiency. The reason the MBTA did not choose the Providence line in the first place was due to technical and political barriers. Coordinating Amtrak's electrification infrastructure is not easy, requiring legal agreements and upgrading supporting infrastructures such as stations, turnouts, and platforms in areas such as Attleboro, TF Green Airport, and Wickford Junction. Compared to building charging stations, maintenance workshops, and purchasing new battery trains for the Fairmount line on a smaller scale, electrifying the entire Providence line is a much more complex and expensive challenge. In addition, the issue of public funding is also a concern for the MBTA, with a contract worth about $54 million for Keoli's and nearly $70 million for the charging station system and maintenance workshop, along with annual operating costs of about $30 million. The total long-term investment and operating costs of the Fairmount line project have reached nearly $124 million. This is a significant number in the context of limited funding for public transportation in Boston. However, the project also brings great expectations for changes in the transportation system. According to experience from similar systems around the world, such as Caltrain in the San Francisco Bay Area, Switching to electric trains has increased passenger numbers by 40% in just the first three months of operation, showing the appeal and efficiency of electrification for users. In the long term, electric trains not only save on operating and maintenance costs, but also have the ability to accelerate and decelerate faster than diesel trains, helping to shorten travel times and increase the accuracy of schedules. This is also an important factor in attracting people to switch to using public transport instead of private cars, contributing to reducing traffic congestion and environmental pollution. MBTA's status. The MBTA needs to make the transition now because most of the MBTA's locomotives were introduced in the mid to late 20th century, and many have undergone four major overhauls. Despite regular maintenance, their mechanical systems are still affected by their long lifespan and high operating intensity. The MBTA has spent hundreds of millions of dollars to renovate older locomotives, but the efficiency is not commensurate. In addition, diesel operating costs are rising over time. Fuel prices fluctuate widely, and maintenance costs are high due to complex mechanical components that require frequent replacement. While major cities around the world have switched to electric or hybrid trains, the MBTA remains stuck in the old model. The pressure is increasing as commuter rail lines are forecast to increase ridership dramatically over the next decade. If the system continues to rely on diesel locomotives, 
the risk of congestion, delays, and operational shutdowns is almost certain. This is why the MBTA is forced to find a transition model that is flexible enough to deploy immediately. BEMU became the right solution in the transition period. It does not require wiring the entire line, does not require rebuilding the entire infrastructure, but can still operate on electricity at both ends thanks to Amtrak's cable system. Fairmount was chosen as the test site because it is the least complex line and is also a good place to evaluate the compatibility between new battery technology and real-world operating conditions. In short, despite many technical, financial, and policy challenges, the battery electric train project on the Fairmount line is still an important and promising first step in the modernization and emission reduction roadmap of the MBTA system. The success of the project will pave the way for future expansion to larger lines, moving toward a greener, more sustainable urban transportation network. The story doesn't stop at Fairmount if we want to create a truly modern network. The MBTA will have to continue to expand this effort to larger, more heavily traveled lines. Will the success of this first project be the catalyst that will propel Boston forward on its electrification path? Or is this just a cautious test before a much longer journey? The answer will take time, but clearly the change has begun, and we are all waiting to see what the MBTA's next steps will be. That's all for today. See you next time.